Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark and I'm your host and on today uh, we're going to show you how to relubricate solid housed industrial ball and roller bearings and in order to do that I'm going to bring on my special guest Mark Zubak. He's with Rexdoor Corporation's bearing division and Mark welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you Tom. Uh, got a lot of stuff on the table right here. Uh, what are we going to learn today? Tom first of all let me explain why this demonstration is so important. Lubrication is the number one cause of bearing failures. Okay. Over 40 percent of bearing failures are caused by some kind of mishap in lubrication. So if we get rid of that lubrication negligence, everything works, we take care of it, the performance, our equipment works better, and we get extended life. Exactly, Tom. Okay, all right, so uh, what, do we got in, what do we got going? Okay, well we got our grease gun, okay. uh, we've got our, our Rex brand ZA2307, We've got some rags, we've got some grease samples to take a look up, and of course we've got our PPE. Right, you got yours on, I've got my PPE mine. on, Tom. Go Always wear on. your PPE. Tom, lubrication reduces friction and wear. The way it does that is providing a small lubrication film between the metal surfaces. That reduces our friction wear. Also provides corrosion protection, and also provides a means by which we can flush out contaminants. And, and there's multiple types of lubrication, Yes, right? there is. We've got the oil lubrication and we've got grease lubrication. Today's focus is on grease lubricated house bearings. You know, someone like me, I'm, I'm not really sure how often, what's the amount. How do I know what to use? Well, we've got charts. Right, you charts. Know. Everybody's got charts. Everybody's got charts. Right. And it's a good starting point. Yeah. I prefer what I call the clear method. Okay. What the clear method is definitely, it defines the whole lubrication process. Is that an acronym it for something? It is an acronym. It, okay. uh, we got C for clean, L for lubricate, E for examine, A for adjust, and R for repeat. Oh, okay. So the first thing we want to do, Tom, is we want to uh, take our rag and we want to clean the area around the seal lip so it's nice and clean. We're going to clean that up? Clean that up. All right. Let's see. How's that? Good job. Tom. Not bad? Okay. Good job. All right. Next, we want to lubricate the bearing. So we're going to use our grease gun and we're going to lubricate the bearing until we physically purge grease out of the seal lip. We actually want to purge the grease. Well, um, purge, that's not good when it comes yeah, to seals that's, though. You know, that's not necessarily true, Tom. But for the most part, this is a purgeable bearing. Bearing seals are designed and the house bearings to purge. Right. We want them to purge because we want the contaminants to come out. Okay, how are we doing there? Oh, we got a nice little purge there. We got, okay, we got that off there. I see the purging. All right, uh, C-L-E, examine. Examine, Okay. Now. We got examine. So we want to evaluate the condition of that grease. You know, we want to take a look at that grease. We want to feel it between our fingers. Oh, okay. All right. You know, so we're taking a look at it, we're feeling it between, we want to feel for grit, maybe some inconsistencies. Feels nice and smooth. Yeah, good grease because, it, yeah, we got a brand new bearing here, so that's what you're looking for. Okay. But when you're out in the field, obviously that could be a little bit different scenario. You know, our first grease was the good grease, right. fresh grease, which you just felt. Looks the same. Looks the same. It's great grease. Right. Second one is water contamination. It looks that a little pale. Looks a little pale, and that's very typical of water contamination. It's milky in color, very thin in consistency. All right. Next one is uh, dried up. You can see from that one, Tom, it's pretty dry. It doesn't yeah. look like grease. It doesn't look like grease, but, you know, surprisingly enough, you can't get that out of a bearing. No, no oil left. It's done. Wow, yeah, that's rough. Next one we have is uh, overheated. Uh -huh. You know, generally black in color. You know, could even turn into carbon dust. What I do to my burgers on the weekends. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. you don't want that. Uh, and then uh, our next one is incompatibility. Doesn't get along with the bearing. They does, fight. Yeah, they, they fight. Oh, a little okay. Bit. Uh, basically, what happens is grease is made up of oil and a base thickener. No. Okay. We're concerned about the base thickeners. All right. Some base thickeners are compatible. For example, a polyurea based grease mm -hmm. and a lithium complex grease based grease, not compatible, cause a chemical reaction. D just make sure you use the correct grease. You want to use the correct grease, but there's no one perfect grease. Okay. You know, we want to take a look at the application. We want to look at speed. We want to look at load. We've got to look at environmental conditions. I mean, we've got to look at the compatibility issue. Okay. And now that we have that examined, uh, what do we do? What do Next we thing we want to do is we want to, uh, our frequency obviously isn't working, so we want to adjust our frequency. Okay, C-L-E-A, adjust. So we want to adjust our frequency. We've examined our condition of our grease, so we want to adjust the frequency. And my, my step is always to cut it in half. So, for example, if I'm greasing once a month, now I want to go down to two weeks. So I'm going to adjust my frequency by half. Why not just grease a bearing every day? Yeah, you can. You know, if I got a slow speed application, n not a problem. You can put as much grease as you want in there and you're not going to hurt the application. Got it. But if I got a high speed application like fan and blower, we could overheat the bearing by putting too much grease in there. Gotcha. And the final step? Is the repeat. I want to repeat this process to make sure that we're getting clean grease coming out of the bearing. If I don't, I want to readjust. So got it's just it. a loop process going back and forth. Excellent. Fantastic stuff. Mark, thank you very no much. No problem. Thanks. Mark Zubak.
He's with Rexnord Corporation's Bearing Division. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, need some more information, don't forget to contact the Motion Industries branch location that's nearest you. Hopefully this will help your practical application. And as you saw, I wore my PPE during this entire operation. Make sure you wear the proper PPE for whatever the job calls for. And don't forget to look for other how-to videos from Motion Industries with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks for watching.